G'day folks, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation and Mavericks Club and this presentation is called The Blueprint for Growth. There's quite a lot to get through in 45 minutes, so stay with us, we're gonna move pretty quickly. Uh, this is the process that we use to grow our own business and different product lines within our business and it's the same process that we use to teach our agency clients how to grow their business. The model is simplify to amplify. We call it the blueprint for growth. But before we get there, I'd like to introduce you to my friends Robert and Alyssa Simmons from the Midwest of the USA. Robert and Alyssa have followed our process, built a great business with people and processes in place, and they are now living the dream. Well, in fact, why don't I just let Robert and Alyssa tell you all about it. Hey everyone, my name is Robert. This is my wife, Alyssa, and we are absolutely massive Disney fans. We've stayed on property, we've stayed off property, we've been with all of our siblings. He's the oldest of 11, I'm the oldest of five. And we've come by ourselves, just the two of us. We've done the dining plan, we've done without, we've done a ton of planning, and we've just come and winged it. And one thing we've learned is the amount of magic you find at Disney World really relates to the amount of planning you do ahead of time. Especially in the last several years, Disney has become a very important place to plan ahead. You've got to book your dining reservations and your fast passes in your hotel and look for the different specials in the hotel and worry about peak season and off season and all these other factors and it just gets really confusing. We wanted to help people have the best Disney vacation they can. If you're going to come to Disney World, why not make it a magical experience for you and your family? So we're creating a website. But we don't want to just rely on our past knowledge from all of our other Disney trips to build this website out with this information. See, even the things that were relevant five years ago are completely irrelevant today. So for the year of 2019, we're moving here to Disney World. We're selling our home, we're selling everything we own, we're moving into the Walt Disney World Resorts. And we're gonna live out of the 32 different resorts for the course of one year. And while we're here, we're going to review every attraction, every resort, every restaurant to help you understand what is out there for your family to experience at Disney World. But we can't do it without your help. We need you to like this video, comment on this video, share it with your friends. We wanna help everyone that we can, but we can't do that unless we get the word out about it. Some of our family and friends have told us that we're absolutely crazy for trying this. And they might be right. But we're in a place where dreams can come true. And to take a quote from one of my heroes, Walt Disney. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. Ah, it's a fantastic story and uh, it's been great to be part of their journey over the last few years helping Robert and Alyssa grow their business so that they can do what it is they want to do. So what I'd love you to do right now is just leave a comment near this video and tell me what your idea of freedom is. Why do you want to grow your business and when your business is at a point where it's supporting your lifestyle, what is it that you actually want to do with your life? Robert and Alyssa are spending a year living at Walt Disney World. What is it that you want to do and why are you building your business? All right, let's talk about the rules of engagement here. Uh, here is my commitment to you. I am only going to teach you what works in this presentation. There's no theory here unless it's been battle tested and proven in our business and our agency client businesses. Everything I'm going to teach you here is absolutely actionable. You can take action on all of this stuff. Uh, you, you know, again, it's not just some esoteric theory that you have to then go and try and figure out. It's very, very actionable stuff. And I'm going to give you my absolute best and leave nothing on the table. What I'm asking for you is a bit of a commitment from yourself, is to take off the mask. Don't pretend that everything's okay in the business. Just be really honest with yourself. Be positive, honest, and kind with yourself. Pat yourself on the back for the achievements that you've made so far. Stay positive and be honest with yourself about where you need help and where you need to improve. And fully commit to the process and commit to taking massive, imperfect action. It's the only way you're going to achieve what it is you want to achieve. Uh, regarding the content in this presentation, you'll see some things here and you'll say, yep, that's new, that's pretty awesome. You'll see some things where you'll say, I knew that and there's nothing new there and that's okay too. My advice would be, let's just do it. Don't worry about whether or not you've already seen this. If you're not taking action on it, then it's all academic and I don't want it to be academic. I want you to get some results. So let's just get in and get, get stuck in and do it. All right, uh, you drive, I'll navigate. Here's, here's the way this works. Your business is your business. Think of, think of your business as your car and where you want to go in your car is your outcome and your version of freedom and the goals that you want to achieve. 
I've got the map, I'm happy to navigate, but ultimately you need to drive and it's your car. If your car falls apart because you don't service it or your tyres fall off because you haven't had the tyres change and you don't put enough petrol in the car, that's your problem, not mine. I can't drive the car for you, it's your business, not mine. I'm just here to navigate. Sound good? All right. So we are gonna move very fast, as I've said. There is a lot to get through and I wanna give you guys as much actionable takeaways as possible. So the blueprint for growth, the promise of the blueprint for growth is that if you follow this process and work extremely hard and don't quit when things get tough, because they will, you will end up with more money, more time, and ultimately more freedom to do the things that what you wanna do, like go and live at Walt Disney World or whatever it is you wanna do. Spend more time with your family or travel the world, be location independent like James Fulton, whatever you wanna do. So typically speaking, there are two stages of business when people uh, think about growing. They either need growth, that's the first stage of business. I need customers, I need to grow this business. Or you're doing okay. Where are you at right now? Just leave me a comment somewhere near this video and say that you need growth you need to get customers and you need to get more revenue in the door, or you're doing okay. Just let me know in the comments near this video. Doing okay is actually a pretty bad place to be because sometimes it's worse than needing growth because you're not hungry anymore. There's no desperation. You're doing okay, yeah, we're making some money, we're having a pretty good lifestyle, but there's no desperation and you're not hungry, so you can become complacent. The problem is there are too many choices. No matter what you're trying to do in the business, we are overwhelmed with ideas and strategies and tactics and coaches and consultants and courses and blah, 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 blah. And there's just so many choices, we don't know which one is going to work and we end up par paralyzed through analysis, the old analysis by paralysis saying, we just we try and analyze all the information in front of us and we don't take any action. So I wanna to talk to you very briefly about Jasmine Andrews and her two daughters, Indigo and Ruby. Uh, Jasmine, uh, when she first joined our program, she was building websites for $500 and uh, her eldest daughter, Indigo, was diagnosed with, uh, with autism. Now Jasmine, unfortunately, lost her job, was made redundant when she was just about to go back from maternity leave. So all of a sudden, the stakes were pretty high. She was building websites. She built her first website while holding Indigo in her arms. And uh, then a couple of years later, Indigo was diagnosed with autism. So all of a sudden, Jasmine had to spend a lot of time with Indigo. And uh, you know, Jasmine could hardly leave the house because Indigo needed her mum's attention. When they fell pregnant with Ruby, her husband actually lost his job, was made redundant. And uh, Ruby was then also diagnosed with autism. So Jasmine had two daughters that she needed to put a lot of time and energy into, and she really needed her business to flourish. She was building websites for $500 when she joined us and uh, recently uh, we published a case study on our website. Jasmine is now doing multiple six figures in revenue in her business and has spent, has been, it, it had the luxury of, of having the time to put in 100 hours of early intervention into her daughters so that her daughters can, can get a good education and, and go to school. So again, been a fantastic uh, part of my journey to be part of Jasmine's story and really wanna thank Jasmine for sharing that story with us. I'm also going to walk you through how we turned $4,000 in Facebook ads into $120,000 in revenue and show you the process that we went through to do that. All right, a couple of quotes here. Roy T. Bennett, this is just a mindset thing. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about mindset during this presentation because it's super important. Beliefs are choices. First, you choose your beliefs, then your beliefs affect your choices. I love this saying. First, you choose your beliefs then your beliefs affect your choices. I'm also gonna talk a little bit later on about self-talk and how that can affect your beliefs and your thoughts. Talking can transform minds, which can transform behaviors, which can transform institutions. And this quote was by this lady here, uh, who if you don't know, of course, is Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook. Talking can transform minds, which can transform behaviors, which can transform institutions. And I just want you to hold these quotes in your mind as we walk through this presentation. Okay, so the five steps of the blueprint for growth are simplify, clarify, verify, codify, and amplify. I'll say them again. Simplify, clarify, verify, codify, and amplify. And we think of this as like a megaphone where we simplify our business model on the left-hand side there. Then we go through the verify, uh, clarify, uh, sorry, the clarify, verify, codify, amplify model, and we eventually amplify our message to grow that part of the business. So let's dive in and have a look at what this actually looks like. 
So simplify means that you simplify your product offering or you simplify your business model into the 20% of what you're currently doing that moves 80% of the needle. The benefit of this is that you become easier to refer. This is my friend Dale Beaumont, runs a program here in Australia called Business Blueprint. It's very easy for me to refer people to Dale because I know exactly what he does and I know the exact value proposition for his members. So he becomes very easy for me to refer to. Here's the thing, Google is for words. People use Google to search for things using words. Facebook is for people. So you get recommendations from your friends and your social network on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, of course, is for food and quote cards. And Twitter is, of course, for foreign policy announcements. Here's the thing, 80 million small to medium business pages on Facebook. That's right, there are 80 million small to medium business pages on Facebook and six million of those advertise on Facebook. This is your competition. Whether you advertise on Facebook or not, it's irrelevant. Six million small to medium business pages are currently advertising on Facebook. And in fact, I thought that figure was just so big, it deserved its own animation. Six million advertisers on Facebook. So the idea is that we want you to become somebody we recommend, somebody to cut through the noise and become somebody that we can recommend. And if you do all the things for all the people, then you can't be someone we recommend because we don't know who to recommend to you because we're confused about what it is you do. Here's an example of a post I put in one of our Facebook groups recently. Who or what is your go-to resource for SEO knowledge and training? And overwhelmingly, the response was people like Kate Toon, Rebecca Gill, Brian Dean, and Yoast. They were the names that kept coming up, and of course, Rand Fishkin. They were the names that kept coming up over and over again. Rebecca Gill, Kate Toon, Brian Dean, Yoast, Rand Fishkin. They are known for providing SEO training software or tools or services to clients, so it's very easy for us to refer to them. The great thing about getting great referrals, high quality targeted referrals, is you have a lower cost per customer. The problem is, how do you cut through the noise? Well, I wanna play you a short video from my friend Simon Major and his team at Practice Edge here in Melbourne. Simon Major is an ex-chiropractor and he has simplified his offering to just offering SEO and pay-per-click campaigns to health professionals. Let's hear Simon talk about it. Three years ago, I was out there doing all this myself and I got some advice that I need to remove myself from the business and it's the best thing I ever did. Now we have you know, a team of, of eight or nine of us out there and I don't do any of the work anymore other than just the strategy. And so for me, that's my sweet spot. That's where I wanna be. And I can, you know, think, I can develop, I can, um, you know, consider ideas and, and look at implementing them and making those ideas come to life, which will ultimately help our clients. So the first part of the process is to simplify what it is you are doing and we're going to use Pareto Principle to do that. The Pareto Principle of course says that 20% of your effort will give you 80% of your return. That's right, 20% of your effort will give you 80% of your return. It's the old 80-20 rule. So I'm asking you now, what is the 20% that you are doing for your clients that delivers 80% of the value to your clients? Here's the framework to try and figure it out. Number one, you need to be able to get results for your clients. So whatever it is you're doing needs to be able to actually get results for your clients. That kind of goes without saying. It should also get you very excited and be something that gets you out of bed in the morning and gets you super pumped to come to work and help your clients. And also, the market must need it. There's no point being very good at getting results and being very excited about it if there's a very tiny market that needs it. This is what we call the sweet spot. The sweet spot uh, is usually, usually uh, illustrated by a three-circle Venn diagram, that's right, it wouldn't be a presentation without a three-circle Venn diagram. Uh, one of those circles represents what you're really good at getting results with, one represents uh, what your passion is and what you're really excited about, and the other represents the market need. And in the middle is the sweet spot there. So we coach creators to help them grow their business. That's, we've simplified our model to this, we coach creators to help them grow their business, yeah? And most of our creators are digital marketers, web designers, SEO, social media agencies, pay-per-click agencies, copywriters, videographers, graphic designers, people that are creating things and generally providing marketing services to clients. We coach them to help them grow their business. Very simple, that's what we do, okay? So rule number one, simplify your offering. Number two, 
clarify. How do we clarify our messaging now? Okay, we've clarified our messaging very simply into this, this one sentence. Your job is to clarify what you do so that it makes sense to the market. So please don't say we build websites for dentists. Nobody cares. Okay, nobody wants a website. Please don't say, uh, you know, we do SEO for plumbers. Nobody wants SEO. That's not what they want. We'll talk about that in a moment. Why is this important? Because the IMF predicts a global slowdown. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is predicting a global slowdown due to US and China relations and, of course, Brexit. That's right. They are predicting a global slowdown. Everything is a commodity, pretty much. Most of what you do has become a commodity, and I put myself in, uh, in that category. If you're building websites, doing SEO, running social media campaigns, it's a commodity and eventually will be replaced by robots. Uber is now cheaper than taxis. Okay, when Uber launched, it was a premium black car only service. It is now cheaper than taxis. And in Melbourne and Los Angeles, and I think uh, Dallas, there you go, they're the three cities, Melbourne, Los Angeles, and Dallas, Uber is trialing Uber Elevates. That's right, it's called Uber Elevate. I gave them the rights to use that word. And uh, they're trialing Uber Taxis. You'll be able to land here at Melbourne Airport, get into a pilotless Uber taxi, and within 11 minutes be in the city. Okay, this is, I mean, the consumer's expectations are going through the roof. So how do we compete with consumer expectations? Well, in the words of the wonderful Zig Ziglar, don't become a wandering generality, be a meaningful specific. That's right, that was a quote from the uh, fantastic man himself, Zig Ziglar. And the point of this exercise is to clarify your message until you find a message that resonates with the market. Now we call this the rapid learning loop. On one side of the learning loop is your simplified business model. So in Simon Major's case, it is SEO and pay-per-click campaigns for health professionals. On the other side of this loop is the, the message that we need to clarify in order for our target market to say, yes, that's exactly what we want. The beautiful thing about doing this is that your customers design your product with you. You end up with a very specific product that makes pricing irrelevant. And I just thought I'd use a uh, picture of my favorite car there, the good old Tesla Model X, possibly the best car ever made in the history of car making on the planet of Earth. Uh, if you design a product specifically with your clients that they love, you make pricing irrelevant because the thing is your customers expect more for less. And this is exactly how we turned a $4,000 Facebook ads campaign into $120,000 in revenue. We got super clear with our messaging. Let me walk you through the framework to clarify your messaging. The framework looks like this. Number one, you've got to have customer benefits. Nobody cares about what you do until they understand what it means for them. Okay, so you've got to be able to articulate the benefits to the customer. The second thing is you've got to have a big bold promise. You've got to be able to promise your clients something, otherwise you just won't get their attention long enough to have a conversation with them. The third thing is that you've got to be able to articulate the problem that you are solving. In our case, it's agency owners who either have got lumpy cash flow because of the feast and famine cycle of client work, or they're so overwhelmed with work that the business owner has become the bottleneck and they're risking burnout. They're the two ends of the spectrum. So we're very good at articulating our, our customer's problem because we understand their problem very well. The fourth thing you've got to have is a unique process. You've got to have a process for taking your customer from solving problem to a, achieving the promise that you've promised that you can help them achieve. Yeah? You've got to have a unique process and that really is just a unique way of approaching the problem. And then you've got to have proof. I'll give you an example of this in a moment. So you've got to be able to articulate the problem that you help them overcome, the promise that you can help them achieve, you've got to have a process which you help them go through and proof, and it's got to speak to the customer using benefits that make sense to them. And what you want to end up with is a very simple sentence that sounds something like this. We help creators build a business that works for them so they can live more of their life by installing the Mavericks model in their business. Meet Simon Major, he's the proof. Now, in conversation, I might switch that up and say, we use the Mavericks model to help creators build a business that works for them so they can live more of their life. You can play around with the process, the problem, the promise, and the order of things depending on the conversation you're having. And of course, when you're having a verbal conversation with someone, you wanna make sure it sounds as organic as possible. The point is to go through that rapid learning loop 
try this messaging out with people. If their eyes glaze over or they fall asleep, then you know you've got a problem. Go back to the clarify part of the model, work out your messaging, work out what, it, what is it that we do that actually moves the needle. Go verify that with some customers or some prospects and go through that rapid learning loop. The faster you learn, the faster you'll grow. All right, the next part of the blueprint for growth is verify. How do we now verify that we've got a message that actually resonates with the market? Well, here's the truth. We don't live in a bubble. So you and I could you know, wax lyrical about this stuff until the cows come home and get very, very excited about what we've come up with. But the truth is that the market and, and the market's ability to buy our products and services is the only thing that really matters. So getting paid is like getting laid. I know this is a, uh, a family time slot, but the truth is once you get paid for your services, the relationship changes. Now, getting paid is like getting laid. The stakes are higher, there's more trust involved. So you've got to be able to get paid for your products and services, otherwise it's all academic. And as I've said before, the faster we learn, the faster we grow. So you wanna try and get through that rapid learning loop as quickly as possible. Customers trust process more than people. So you wanna build in a unique process that you take people through. Please do not tell people that you build websites because their eyes will glaze over, they don't care, and they won't pay any more than $500 for a website because that's what websites cost in the consumer's eye, right? So have a unique process that you take people through, which may include building a new website. And uh, the benefit of doing this is that you can actually get paid to improve your offering. How do you do it? Well, you've got to have conversations with your customers and prospects. That's the truth. You've just got to get out of the building or get on the phone, jump on Zoom, and have lots of conversations with your customers and prospects and ask lots of questions. Ask them lots of questions about where they want to be in 12 months time, what their success path looks like, what their problem is right now, what their roadblocks are, and ultimately ask them to buy the thing that you're offering. The best thing you can do and the most powerful way you can learn and get through that rapid learning loop as quickly as possible is to do what I call collect rejections. So if you ask somebody to buy and they say no, say fantastic, why? Why is this not right for you? What would this need to look like for it to be a complete no-brainer and for you to be willing to crawl across broken glass and throw me your credit card? Literally, I will actually say those words and people will tell me, well, it needs to do this, it needs to solve that problem, it needs to promise this, it needs to be delivered like this, it needs to be this fast, it needs to be this colour, there needs to be these touch points, and then I will design a product or a service that suits them specifically. Whether it's a course, whether it's a coaching program, whether it's a, you know, using our studio to produce courses, whatever it is, we'll design a product or a service that suits the exact customer uh, that is going to buy it, as long as there are enough of them to turn that into a profitable part of the business. Okay, once we have simplified our business model, we've clarified our messaging, we've verified that people actually want to buy it by, you know, actually getting people to buy it, now we're onto something. And at this point, and at this point only, should we think about codifying this part of the business so that we can grow it without us becoming the bottleneck. I see this happen all the time. Simon Kelly and I talk about this all the time, that people spend all their life codifying their business without having any customers. You've gotta get some customers in the door because when, as I've just said, when customers start coming in the door, the relationship changes, they will tell you what they want and then you will know what you need to codify. There might be a bunch of stuff that you don't need to codify. And codifying, it just means writing down the way we do things here, how we do things in this building. That's what I'm gonna codify here. So, consistency of behavior breeds trust. That is rule number one. That is why you need to codify things because consistency of behavior is the thing that will breed trust with your customers. So as you onboard new staff members, you want them to behave in a consistent way. And customer experience is pretty much the only thing that cannot be commoditized. And that is why Walt Disney has been such a successful brand for so long because I haven't been yet, but from all I've heard, the experience at the, at the Disney theme parks is just absolutely mind blowing. And Walt knew that. Customer experience cannot be commoditized. Their whole mission was to bring happiness to people, right? Now, and happiness cannot be brought with the commodity. Happiness is, is, is uh, instilled and is given through experience. The other thing about codifying is that technology is no longer a barrier, right? You can use any of the tools available, System Hub, Trainual, Google Docs, whatever you use, Sweet Process, Process Street. The, the technology is no longer a barrier to codify the way that you do things. The great thing about codifying your business is that you build an asset that generates profit without you. That's the big promise of 
codifying. My friend Dave Jennings owns a software product called System Hub, and I was talking to him on the phone the other day, and he was telling me a case study of one of their clients who owns a doggy daycare business. That's right, you drop the dog off there uh, while you go to work, and they look after your dog for daycare. And this uh, business, the small business owner, recently sold her business to a large multinational corporate, and the, the acquisition was based on the fact that the financials looked good and their systems were well documented, right? So it's really important to have systems documented in your business because that is part of building an asset that can generate profit without you. Whether or not you ever sell the business is irrelevant. You need to have your basics codified. The problem is you, as the entrepreneur, the freelancer, or the business owner, you are the bottleneck. Look at that traffic, I know which lane I'd rather be in. The one on that side, or that side, depending on which way you're looking at this video. The one with uh, the, the one that's free flowing. That's the way that you want information to flow through your business, okay? So, let me show you um, a little party trick here. Uh, we went from chaos to 150 plus standard operating procedures in four months, and what I might do right now is just bounce out of this presentation and show you in Slack uh, how anyone in our organization can search for one of our standard operating procedures within a couple of keystrokes. You ready? All right, let's dive in. Okay, so here I am, I've taken you inside our company Slack. That's right, this is uh, my own personal channel in Slack. But I can do this in any channel in our Slack team. I can just type the word process and then a keyword. And in this case, I'm gonna type in the keyword refund because we sell software here in the business and I don't know how to process a refund for one of our customers because it's been a long time since I've had to do that. And for some reason, some customers lose their mind and ask for a refund on our software products. It baffles me as to why they would do that, but sometimes they do. And we have to you know, honor that request and go and give them their money back if they're within a 30 day window of buying the product because that's our 30 day money back guarantee. Fortunately, it's less than about 1% of our customers that lose their mind and ask for a refund. But when they do, we need to know how to do it. Now, if uh, everyone else was on holiday and I had to do this, I would have no idea. Uh, so I would come into Slack, type in backslash process and then the word refund and hit enter. And this little Slack bot is going to show me the processes in Google Drive that relate to refund. And I can just click on any of these processes here and go over and, and it'll open the process document in Google Docs and I can just follow the process. Now, uh, don't ask me which Slack bot this is because we custom wrote it ourselves and no, we're not going to give it to you. So please don't waste your time trying to find this in the Slack marketplace. It doesn't exist and it's not available. Just wanted to put a, a full stop under that conversation right there. Uh, if I don't know the process that I'm searching for and I just wanna have a geezer at all of our different processes, I can just type backslash process and then hit enter and it will give me a master list of all of the standard operating, oh, there we go, all of the standard operating procedures in uh, Google Drive uh, and there they are. There's over 150 of them there in Google Drive and guess what? Guess how many of these I've written? Guess how many of these standard operating procedures I wrote? One. I wrote the first one. In fact, I didn't. My business partner wrote the first one and I just came in and simplified it a little bit. Uh, our team members have written all of these standard operating procedures because it is part of their job to document their job, otherwise they can't go on holidays. All right, let's go back to the keynote. So let's pretend that you've bought into the idea of documenting your processes. I know what you're saying. Oh, there's no way I can document 150 processes and I'm here to tell you that you don't need to. There are three processes that I think you need to document in your business to begin with to identify that this is a profitable part of the business that we're gonna grow. Remember, we've simplified what we do down to the 20% that moves 80% of the needle, okay? We've clarified our messaging, we've put it in front of some customers, and they have verified the idea by buying it. ka -ching! They've actually given us some money for the product or service that we're selling. I don't care if this is a digital course, whether it is a website, whether it's SEO, social media, marketing, funnel retainers, coaching, consulting, I don't care what it is. This works for any type of business, okay? Particularly when you are selling creative services and marketing services to clients. Uh, this could even work if you are speaking at conferences and delivering keynotes or workshops, right? Now, uh, codifying, you only need three processes to begin with. The first process you need, of course, is your sales process because you don't wanna be the one doing all of the selling because even though that is exciting, it can get very boring very quickly and you become the bottleneck. So you need to be able to 
delegate and teach someone else how to do sales. And the easiest way to do that is to build a sales funnel. I'm not going to bore you with all the details around that. You should just check out our course, which is called High Ticket Sales Funnels. I believe if you go to wpelevation.com slash courses, you can find a link there to the High Ticket Sales Funnel course, which will teach you how to build a high ticket sales funnel and in fact, give you the scripts for the phone calls and all the different pages you set up. But it's basically walking someone through a series of web pages, proving that you can do what you do, showing them your process, and then getting them on a phone call. That is your sales process, very simple to document. The second part that you wanna document is your operations. Once we now have a new customer and they've said yes, how do we onboard them and how do we deliver the thing that we've promised? Very simple, just bullet point it out. This is what happens when they first buy. How do we craft that amazing customer experience in the first seven to 14 days that they become a customer? And then how do we consistently deliver and wow them with a great customer experience? And the third SOP or standard operating procedure that you wanna document relates to the finance part of your business. And there are three numbers that I think you should begin to measure. And this SOP is literally just setting up a dashboard. It can be a very simple Google sheet to begin with. Don't get bogged down in which dashboard software to use. Don't worry about any of that rubbish right now. Just a very simple Google spreadsheet. And there are three numbers I think you should measure to begin with. They are the number of customers per month, the average spend per customer, and the profit per customer. Okay, the number of customers per month, the average spend per customer, and the profit per customer. Now, if you wanna go down a very, very, very deep rabbit hole on measuring numbers, you should definitely read Cadence, A Tale of Fast Business Growth by a fantastic Melbourne entrepreneur named Pete Williams, uh, and he'll show you the seven profit uh, levers, the seven numbers that you should set up in your business to maximize profit in your business. It's a fantastic book, very easy to read, I strongly recommend it. All right, the next part of the blueprint for growth is, and the final part, is amplify. Now we've simplified our business model into the 20% that moves 80% of the needle and delivers 80% of the value for the customers. We've then clarified our messaging. We've then verified the messaging by getting a customer to buy. Ka-ching! We've then codified the sales process, the onboarding and delivery, and our finance measurement process. What do we do now? Well, we amplify the thing. We actually wanna now blow this up. Now, we all know this saying, if you build it, if you build it, that's right, nobody cares. If you build it, they don't care, right? We are absolutely overloaded and bombarded with too much information these days. So if you build it, they probably don't care. And unfortunately, this is where most people quit. Aww because this is where things start to get tricky and start to get hard. And you have to do what I call, um, ready for this horribly overused word, you have to do what I call hustle. Now when I say hustle, I don't mean work 18 hours a day until your eyes bleed, and I don't necessarily mean work any harder than you are right now. When I say hustle, what I mean is that you have to figure out a way to get around obstacles. Get over, get around, or get under the obstacle in front of you. Hustle for me just means don't quit. Doesn't matter how long it takes, doesn't matter how many hours you work, just don't quit. That's what, when I say hustle, I mean get creative and solve problems, okay? Because this actually is your road to freedom. If you've got, if you've identified a whole new business model or part of your business that you can scale up profitably, this is your road to freedom. And the beautiful thing about amplifying, and what I'm gonna walk you through in a moment, is your business becomes the authority. I'm looking at a book over my bookshelf here called Authority Content, written by my good friend Dave Jennings, another book that I would recommend. It is the absolute blueprint for creating authority content to position your business as the authority. The problem I see with most people on that path is that they're building websites or they're doing SEO, and that's not a clarified, simplified message, and nobody cares. So. Simplify, clarify, verify first. Now let's go out to the, to the market and amplify this. Here's the problem. Business as usual will chew you up and spit you out. So you're just gonna get caught up in running the business and doing all the business as usual activities, right? The promise really though is that if you put together one great presentation like we did back in 2012 called 101 Ways to Elevate Yourself and Demand Higher Fees, that one piece of content took us from zero to seven figures. So here's the very, very simple framework to amplify your business. Uh, the framework looks like this. Number one, publish. That's right. Go and Google the WP Elevation podcast 
and Google the guest Bill Ballou, B-E-L-E-W, Bill Ballou. He was on the podcast. He's the most energetic 64-year-old I've ever met. Well, he was 64 at the time. He's probably a bit older than that now. And he says, and I quote, you can fix most problems in your business by publishing more content. And he is true. So you want to publish content that gives away a little about your process, but not all of it, and educate your customers on the problem that you solve and how you do it. Then you want to spend 10 times the amount of time you spent publishing that content, actually promoting that content and getting it in front of the right audience. And I don't just mean running Facebook ads to it. I mean strategically promoting that content online as a value add. And of course you want to partner. You want to find people that can help you blow up that content by partnering with other people who serve a similar audience to you. And if the content is epic, as they say, then your partners will share that content because we're all looking for great content to help educate and inspire our audience. So that, my friends, is the blueprint for growth. We've got simplify, we've got clarify, we've got verify, we've got codify, and we've got amplify. Now, before you go, I just wanna give you this one final little piece of the puzzle, which I call guaranteed success. Because what I've learned over the years is that all the tactics in the world are useless if your thoughts prevent you from taking action. So I wanna walk you through a very simple framework and some very simple mindset exercises here that will hopefully help you think the right thoughts so you can take the right amount of imperfect action so that you can then get the results that you want, all right? And uh, just stay with me here because this could get a little weird. Success is a lot simpler than you think. In fact, Success is actually quite monotonous and boring because it just requires you to do the same thing over and 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 over again until it works. That's right. So let's get you set up for success. The brain is really bad at distinguishing reality from imagination or memory. The brain is really bad at distinguishing reality from imagination or memory. Now, most of you watching this are probably not old enough to remember what this screenshot is from, but it of, of course is from a film that was released around about, I wanna say, the year 2001, perhaps? Maybe? 2000, 99 maybe? Of course, it's called The Blair Witch Project, and this is one of the scariest scenes from that movie where nothing actually happens. They never show you the witch, they never show you the boogeyman, and in fact, if you watch any of the great horror films, most of it is left up to your imagination. Here's another study I love, the Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation Study, which basically strapped uh, probes onto people's brains, and uh, there were three groups. There was one group of people that were asked to practice a five-finger piano exercise every day for five days. Physically practice the exercise. Another group of people were asked to imagine practicing the exercise without moving their fingers. And another group of people were asked to do nothing. Here are the results of the transcranial magnetic stimulation exercise. The first uh, group of um, images here are what happens in the brain, the parts of the brain that measure fl finger flexors and finger extensors. So the people that actually did the practice that's how their brain developed uh, and how their brain changed over five days. The people that imagined doing the practice is the second group of images, almost identical. And of course, the control group that did nothing, well, nothing changed. Super, super interesting. So, I told you this could get weird. What two topics are you not supposed to talk about at a dinner party? Just uh, leave a comment near this video if you know the answer. What two topics are you not supposed to talk about at a dinner party. I've had people respond with sex and Tony Robbins to this question, but of course the answer is politics and religion. Why? Why? Because these are the two topics that I love talking about the most. Why are you not supposed to talk about politics and religion? Because you are actually talking about people's beliefs. You're not talking about scientific data, you're talking about beliefs. And if you question somebody's beliefs around politics or religion, then you're questioning their own actual identity and the way that they feel about themselves in the world and their own world view and their, their own beliefs. So if they question their beliefs, they're questioning how they think about themselves. I just wanna go back to this quote from Sheryl Sandberg. Talking can transform minds, which can transform behaviors, which can transform institutions, okay? Uh, here's another quote. 
Speaking more kindly to yourself is critical because neuroplasticity. That's right, stay with me, I told you this could get weird. Speaking more kindly to yourself is critical because neuroplasticity. This is a quote from this lady here, Annie Wright, who is a psychotherapist and coach from the Bay Area in California. Speaking more kindly to yourself is critical because neuroplasticity. What the hell is neuroplasticity? Well, it is a study that has uh, proven that you can actually form new neural pathways in your brain by talking to yourself. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. I'm encouraging you all to spend more time talking to yourself kindly. So here's the framework I've put together to guarantee you success. The framework is LTBAR, because I couldn't think of a uh, better way to explain this. It is just LTBAR, and it stands for language, thoughts, beliefs, actions, and results. Let's start with thoughts. I'll come back to language in a moment. We have approximately 70,000 thoughts every day. Most of them are completely useless. Here's the truth. Not all of your thoughts are true. Not all of your thoughts are true. Can you believe that? And here's another uh, radical idea. You can actually choose which thoughts to believe. That totally blew my mind when I first discovered that. You can actually choose which thoughts to believe. So let's just pretend for a moment that everything I'm saying is true. If I have a thought and I choose that that thought is true, I can choose that that is now a belief, right? You can choose your beliefs. That's right, you can choose your beliefs. I know, it's a crazy, radical idea. Uh, you will take action in accordance with your beliefs. You will take action in accordance with your beliefs. In fact, it's very difficult to act in direct contrast to your beliefs. When I was a teenager, I did a bit of shoplifting. <gasps> Sorry, Mum, it's true. I used to steal golf balls and blank cassette tapes from the local shopping centre and put them in the inside pocket of my denim jacket, like a cool hoodlum, and then walk home and use the golf balls for golfing practice and use the blank cassettes to record my own remixes of Tears for Fears albums. All true, it's all true. But I always felt really bad afterwards because I was acting incongruently with my beliefs. Now the way I'll prove this point is I'll ask you to try and wet your pants in public. That's right, try and wet your pants in public. Almost impossible to do this. In fact, if anyone does wet their pants in public, please leave me a comment uh, in fact, take a photo, stick it in an envelope, and send it to Troy Dean, courtesy of 231 Chapel Street, Pran in Victoria, 3181. I'd love to see a photo of you wetting your pants in public. Why can't you wet your pants in public? You can think about wetting your pants in public. You can have the thought, but of course, we all know, we all believe that if we wet our pants in public, it would be absolutely mortifying and embarrassing, and we would probably be laughed at and it is part of human nature to want to belong to the tribe and belong to the pack because we are a pack animal. So wetting your pants in public is not going to be very good for being accepted by the tribe. Therefore, it's very difficult to actually wet your pants in public. I've tried, I, I can't do it. So you will take action in accordance with your beliefs, right? But here's the thing, you can actually change your beliefs. Therefore, you can change your actions and actions equal results, right? Actions equal results. Energy in equals energy out. So here's the truth. Every part of your business and life is a direct result of the actions you take. Every part of your business and your life is a direct result of the actions you take. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but if you are unhappy with any part of your business or life, well, you can take action to fix it. Let's talk about results for a moment because there are really six categories of results that I like to look at. Family, friends, fitness, faith, finance, and fun. Faith, if you're not a religious type, then faith could just be spirituality, could be you know, a bit of meditation, yoga, some kind of spiritual journey. So they're the, the six areas of my life that I like to look at. Family, friends, fitness, faith, finance, and fun. I can tell you right now that friends and faith I'm kind of lacking in a little bit because we're going through a very busy, intense period here at work and I'm probably working a little too hard. So friends and faith, I definitely want to improve on. And I can choose to take action to affect those results. Let's go all the way back to the start of this framework, which is language. Saying what you believe out loud reinforces that belief. Saying what you believe out loud reinforces that belief. That's why we like talking to each other 
And remember this, the brain is really bad at distinguishing reality from imagination or memory. So if you cast your mind back to a traumatic episode in your life or you know, maybe you lost someone or something didn't go well and it was very upsetting for you, if you cast your mind back and really remember that time, you can be brought to tears. I mean, you can cry at a memory because the brain is really bad at distinguishing imagination and memory from reality. Talking in the present tense and the third person actually also really works. This is a remarkable study that came out of the University of uh, Michigan. Talking in the present tense and the third person works. So this gentleman here, Ethan Cross, who is a professor in the psychology department at the University of Michigan, uh, did this study where uh, he, they studied a bunch of basketball players and they asked them to talk to themselves out loud in the third person and say, Troy, you can make this shot, man. You've got this shot, Troy. You're all over it. You can make this shot. And those that talked to themselves positively, using positive self-talk in the third person, had better results with speed and accuracy on the basketball court than those who didn't. Fascinating survey and research. I suggest that you look it up. So whatever you believe will come true. So what do you believe? Now I know, that's my quote, whatever you believe will come true, so what do you believe? Now I know some of you are thinking, well, you know, it ain't that easy. Old mate's back here with his arms crossed, it ain't that easy. No, it's not that easy. And this is the thing that a lot of people uh, uh, miss. You can't just think thoughts and they manifest, apart from, you know, despite what the book The Secret will tell you, uh, the thing missing in that book is all of the imperfect action you need to take to make shit real. So the only thing between your beliefs and actuality is time, and how you choose to use it. The only thing between your beliefs and actuality is time and how you choose to use it. So if you're thinking the right thoughts, talking to yourself in the third person, positive affirmations, and you are thinking the right thoughts and choose which thoughts to believe, and then take the right action in the time between now and actuality, then you can actually affect those results. And I actually believe it's already done. Your only job is to choose your beliefs and then act in accordance with them. It's already done. Your only job is to choose your beliefs and then act in accordance with them. I told you this was gonna get weird. My question for you is, what do you need to believe to achieve your desires? What beliefs do you currently have that might be holding you back? And what do you need to believe to achieve your desires? Because the truth is, talking to yourself out loud helps a lot. I know because I do it, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I'm constantly talking to myself out loud and encouraging myself and patting myself on the back. I am my greatest cheerleader and greater champion. And I'm telling you now, this business wouldn't be where it is now if I hadn't done that over the last probably six or seven years that I've been re-brainwashing myself with these positive messages. Talking to yourself out loud helps a lot. So my final thoughts are these. Language impacts thoughts which form beliefs which cause actions, which get results. Language, thoughts, beliefs, actions, and results. And if you just wanna put this into a little bit of perspective, remember, Earth rotates at about 1,600 kilometers per hour. That's about 1,000 miles per hour. That's how fast Earth is spinning to go from midnight to midnight. Earth then spins around the sun at 107,000 kilometers per hour. I can't do the math and figure that out in miles. I think it's about 67,000 miles per hour. That's how fast Earth spins around the sun throughout the course of a year, spinning, rotating at 1,600 kilometers per hour, spinning around the sun at 107,000 kilometers per hour over the course of a year, and traveling around the Milky Way as part of our solar system, hurtling around the Milky Way at 788,000 kilometers per hour. Get your head around those numbers. Uh, so the truth is we actually do live in a bit of a bubble. We live in a very tightly controlled environment that is perfect for life to form. So I actually believe that if you live on Earth, it's like being handed a winning lottery ticket and we need you to lead the way and have an impact. And uh, hopefully this blueprint for growth model will help you have a bigger impact on the world and grow your business so that it can support your lifestyle and give you some freedom and help you support the people around you and the people you love the most. Uh, so you should definitely check out our, our website, wpelevation.com slash blueprint for growth, all one word, and you can download a copy of our slides. That is wpelevation.com slash blueprint for growth, all one word where you can download the slides here. You've been a great audience. Uh, I love all of you very much. My name is Troy Dean. Stay curious and make some noise.